here we are. Yes, Mr. Gaza. And this is what it looks like. Yes. Second Empire furniture, I observe. Well, well, I dare say one gets used to it in time. Some do, some don't. Are all the other rooms like this? How could they be? We are catering for all sorts. Chinamen and Indians, for instance. What use would they have for a Second Empire chair? And what use do you suppose I have for one? Do you know who I was? Oh, well, it's no great matter. And to tell you the truth, I had quite the habit of living among furniture I didn't quite relish, and in false positions. I even come to like it. A false position in a Louis Philippe dining room. You know the style. But at its point, you know, <laughs> bogus and bogus, so to speak. And you will find out that living in a Second Empire drawing room has its own points. Really? Yes, yes, I dare say. Still, I certainly didn't expect this. You know what they tell us now, then? What about? About this residence. Really, sir? How could you believe such cock and bull stories that you told my people would never set their foot here? Well, of course, if they had. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's quite so. But say, where are the instruments of torture? They what, sir? You know, the racks and the red hot pincers and all the other paraphernalia. You must have your little joke, sir. My little joke? I wasn't joking. No oh, mirrors, I notice. No windows either. <laughs> Only to be expected. Nothing great. But damn it all, they might have left me my toothbrush. That's good. So you haven't yet got over your, uh, what do you call it? Sense of human dignity. <laughs> Excuse me, smiling. I'll ask you to be more polite. I quite realize the position I'm in, but I won't tolerate uh, any sorry. of this. Sorry, sir, no offense meant. But all of our guests ask me the same questions. Silly questions, if you'll pardon me saying so. Where is the torture chamber? That is the first thing they'll ask. All of them. They won't even bother their heads about the bathroom requisites, that I can assure you. But after a bit, when they've got their nose back, they're starting about their toothbrushes and what not. Good heavens, Mr. Garza, can't you use your brains? What, I ask you, would be the point of brushing your teeth? Yes, of course, you're right. And why should one want to see oneself in a looking glass? But that bronze contraption on the mantelpiece. Now that's another story. <laughs> I suppose there'll be times when I stare my eyes out at it. Stare my eyes out, see what I mean? All right, let's put our cards on the table. I can assure you, I'm quite conscious of my position. Shall I tell you what it feels like? A man's drowning, choking, sinking by the inches, till only his eyes are above water. And what does he see? A bronze atrocity by what's that fellow's name, Barbara Yen. A collector's piece, as in a nightmare. So that's their idea, isn't it? No, I suppose you're under orders not to answer questions. And I won't insist. But don't forget, my man, I have a good notion of what's coming to me. So don't go boast you've caught me off my guard. I'm facing the situation. I'm facing it. So that's that. No toothbrush. And no bed either. One never sleeps, I take it. That's so. Just as I expected. Why should one sleep? A sort of drowsiness steals on you, tickles you behind the ears, and you feel your eyes closing. But why sleep? You lie down on the sofa, and in a flash, sleep flies away, miles and miles away. So you rub your eyes, get up, and it starts all over again. Romantic. That's what you are, sir. Will you keep your, keep your mouth shut, please? I won't make a scene. I shan't be sorry for myself. I'll face the situation as I said just now. Face it fairly and squarely. I won't have it springing at me from behind before I have the time to size it up. You call that being romantic? 
So it comes to this. One doesn't need rest. Why bother about sleep when one isn't sleepy? But there's a snag somewhere, something, something disagreeable. Why now should it be disagreeable? Ha! Ah, I see. It's life without a break. What do you mean by that? What do I mean? I thought as much. That's why there's something so beastly, so damn bad mannered in the way you stare at me. They're paralyzed. What are you talking about, sir? Your eyelids. We move ours up and down, blinking, we call it. It's like a small black shutter that clicks down and makes a break. Everything goes black, one's eyes are moistened. You can't imagine how restful, how refreshing it is. 4,000 little rests per hour. 4,000 little respites. Just think. So that's their idea. I'm to live without eyelids. Don't act a fool, you know what I mean. No eyelids, no sleep, it follows, doesn't it? I shall never sleep again. But then, how shall I endure my own company? I try to understand, I I'm fond of teasing. It's second nature with me. I'm used to teasing myself, blinking myself if you prefer. I don't tease nicely. But then I, I can't go on doing that without a break. Down there I had my nights. I, I slept, I always had good nights. By way of compensation, I suppose. And happy little dreams. There was a field. Just an ordinary field. I used to stroll in it. Is it daytime now? Can't you see, sir? The lights are on. Ah, I see. It's your daytime. And outside? Outside. Damn it, you know what I mean. Beyond that wall. There is a passage. <coughs> and at the end of the passage? There is more rooms, more passages and stairs. And what lies beyond them? That's all. But surely you have a day off sometimes. Where do you go? To my uncle's place. He's the head well again. And he has a room on the third floor. No, I should have guessed as much. Where's the light switch? There isn't any. What? Can't one turn off the lights? Oh. The management can cut off the current if they want to. But I can't remember they having done so on this floor. So we have all the electricity we want. So one has to live with one's eyes open all the time. To live? Did you say? Let's not quibble over words with one's eyes open forever. Always broad daylight in my eyes and in my head. Suppose I took that bronze contraption and dropped it on the lamp. Wouldn't it go up? You won't be able to lift it, sir. It's too heavy. Right. It's too heavy. If you don't need me anymore, then I'll be off, sir. What? You're going quick? That's a bell, isn't it? And if I ring, you're bound to come. Well, that's so in a way. But there's something wrong with the wiring and it doesn't always work. It's working, all right? It is. But if I were you, I wouldn't count too much on it, sir. It's capricious. I better be going now, sir. No, never mind. Wait. What's this? Can't you see, sir? An ordinary paper knife. Are there books here? No. <clears throat> well, then what's the use of this? Very well, you can go.
Did he call, sir? No. So, madam, this is your room. If there is any information you require. Well, most of our guests have quite a lot to ask me. But I won't insist. Anyhow, as regards the toothbrush, the electric bell, and that thing on the metal shelf, this gentleman here can tell you anything you want to know, as well as I could. We had a little chat. Him and me. Where's Florence? Didn't you hear? I asked about Florence. Where is she? I haven't an idea. Ah, so that's the way it works, does it? Torture by separation. Well, as far as I'm concerned, you won't get anywhere. Florence is a tiresome little fool, and I shan't miss him the least. I beg your pardon, who do you suppose I am? You. Why, the torturer, of course. <laughs> well, that's a good one. Two comic words. I, the torturer. So you came in here, had one look at me, and you thought I was one of the staff. <laughs> of course, it's that silly fellow's fault. He should have introduced us. Daughter, indeed. I'm Joseph Garsak, journalist and man of letters by profession. And as we're on the same boat, so to speak, might I ask you, Mrs. Not Mrs. I'm unmarried. Right, that's a start anyway. Well, now that we've broken the ice, do you really think I look like a torture? And by the way, how does one recognize torturers when one sees them? Evidently, you have ideas on the subject. They look frightened. Right? But how ridiculous. Of whom should they be frightened? Of their victims? <laughs> Laugh away, but I know what I'm talking about. I've often watched my face in the glass. In the glass? How beastly of them. They've removed everything in the least that resembles a glass. Anyhow, I can assure you that I'm not frightened. Not that I take my position lightly. I realize it's gravity only too well, but I'm not afraid. That's your affair. Must you be in here all the time, or do you take a stroll out every now and then? The door's locked. Oh, that's too bad. Look, I can quite understand that it bores you having me here. And I too, well, quite frankly, I'd rather be alone. And I want to, like, think things out, set my life in order. And one does that better by oneself. But I'm sure we'll pull along together somehow. I'm no talker, I don't move much. In fact, I'm a peaceful sort of fellow. Only if I may venture on a suggestion. We must make a point of being extremely courteous to each other. That will ease the situation for both of us. I'm not polite. Uh, then I must be polite for two. Your mouth. I beg your pardon. Can't you keep your mouth still? You keep twisting it about all the time. It's grotesque. So sorry, I wasn't aware of it. That's just what I reproach you with. There you are, again. You speak of politeness and you don't even try to control your face. Remember, you're not here alone. You've no right to inflict the sight of your fear on me. How about you? Aren't you afraid? What would be the use? There was some point in being afraid before, while one still had hope. There's no more hope. But it's still before. We haven't yet begun to suffer. That's so. Well, what's going to happen? I don't know. I'm waiting. Is anyone else coming? 
No, madam. Nobody else is coming. Then we we'll stay here by ourselves, the three of us. This gentleman, the lady and myself. <laughs> There's nothing to laugh about. Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's so sofas. Look at them. They're so hideous. All in angles. And, and look how, how they've been arranged. It makes me think of New Year's Eve when I used to visit the boring old aunt of mine. What's her name? Yeah. Aunt Mary. Her house used to be full of horrors like that. So each of us, I suppose, has a sofa of his own. Oh, is that one mine? But you can't expect me to sit on that one. It'd be too hard with the words. I'm a pale lilac, and this is what? Red and green? Would you prefer mine? Oh, oh. the black and white one, you mean. <laughs> now, that's very sweet of you, but I don't think it would be much of an improvement. Well, what's the good of worrying anyhow? We've each got to uh, take what comes to us. And I'll stick to this one. The only one which might do a pinch is that gentleman. Did you hear? Mr. Garcin. Oh, the sofa you mean. So sorry, madam. Please take it. Well, now that we're to live together, I suggest that we introduce ourselves. I'm Rigo, Esther Rigo, and I'm Inez, Inez Serrano. Very pleased to meet you. Joseph Garza, <clears throat> do you need me anymore? No. You can go and ring when I want you. You're very pretty. I wish we had some flowers to welcome you with. Flowers? Ah, uh, yes. Flowers. I used to love flowers. Only they fade here so quickly, don't you think? It's it's so stuffy. Oh. Well, the great thing is to keep as cheerful as we can, don't you agree? Of course, you know all. Yes. Last week. What about you? I'm quite recent. Yesterday. As a matter of fact, the ceremony is not quite over. The wind is blowing my sister's veil all across the place. She's trying her best to cry. Come, dear, now make another effort. There. That's better. <laughs> Two tears. Two little tears are twinkling under the black face. Oh, dear, what a sight of the this morning. She's holding my sister's arm, helping her along. She isn't crying. I don't blame her. She has always messed one's face up so. All oh, because of my bosom friend, you know. Did you suffer much? No, I was only half conscious, mostly. What was it? Pneumonia. Oh, it's over now. We're leaving this cemetery. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. But quite a crowd they are. My husband stayed at home, of course. Prostrated with grief. Poor man. How about you? The gas stuff. And do you, Mr. Garsman? Twelve bullets through my chest. Sorry, I fear I'm not good company among the dead. Please! Please don't use that word. It, it's so crude and terribly bad taste, really. <clears throat> and anyhow, it doesn't mean much. Somehow I feel that we've never been quite so much alive as as now. Anyway, if you've absolutely got to refer to, to this situation, now, I suggest we call ourselves, uh, wait, absentee. Have you been absent for long? For about a month. Oh, where do you come from? From Rio. I'm from Bahia. Have you anyone left down there? Yes, my wife. She's waiting at the entrance of the barracks. She comes there every day, but they won't let her in. She's trying to keep between the bars. She doesn't yet know I'm absent, but she suspects. Now she's going away, and she's wearing her black dress. 
So much the better, she won't need to change. She isn't crying, but she never did cry anyhow. The bright sunny day and she's like a black shadow creeping down the empty street. Those big, tragic eyes with that martyred look that they always had. Oh, how she got on my nerves! Estelle! Please, Mr. Garza. What is it? You're sitting on my sofa. I beg your pardon. But you look so far away. I'm sorry I disturbed you. I was setting my life in order. <laughs> you may laugh, but you do better to follow my example. No need. My life's in perfect order. It set itself up nicely of its own accord, so I needn't bother about it now. Really? You imagine it's as easy as that? How hot it is here. Do you mind if I take off? How dare you? Oh, please don't. I load men in their shirt sleeves. Well, all right. Of course, I used to spend my nights in the newspaper office. It was a regular black hole down there. We never kept our coats on. Stiflingly hot it would be. Stifling that it is. It's night now. That's so. All of us are undressing. It must be after midnight. How quickly the time passes on earth. Yes, after midnight. They've sealed up my room. It's dark, pitch dark, and empty. They've strung their coats on the backs of their chairs and rolled up their shirt sleeves above the elbow. The air stinks of men in Sigasco. I used to like living among men in their shirt sleeves. Well, in that case, our tastes differ. That's all it proves. How about you? Did you like men in their shirt sleeves? Oh, I don't care much for men, anyhow. I wonder why they put us three together. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> What's that you said? I'm, I'm looking at you two and thinking that we're going to live together. It's absurd. I, I would have expected old friends or relatives. Yes, a charming old friend with a hole in the middle of his face. Yes, him too. He used to dance the tango so divinely, like a professional. But why? Why should the three of us all be able to be put together? A few, a few look, I should say. They lodge folks as they can in order to their coming. Why are you laughing? Because you amuse me with your flukes. But suppose you've got to reassure yourself somehow. I wonder now, have we met each other at some point in our lives? Never. I shouldn't have forgotten you. Oh, oh, perhaps we had friends in common. Did you know the two Guasi Moors? Not likely. But everyone went to their parties. What was their job? Oh, they didn't do anything, but they had this lovely house in the country and hosts of people visited them. I didn't. I was a post office clerk. Oh. What about you, Mr. Garza? We've never met. I always lived in Rio. Oh? Well, then you must be right. It's mere chance that his broad house together. We have chance. And it's by chance this room's furnished as we see it. It's an accident that that sofa over there is a beige and the one over there is a black and white. Mere chance. We'll just try to shift the sofas and you'll see the difference soon enough. And what about the statue on the mantelpiece? Do you think it's there by accident? And how about the heat here? How about that? I tell you, they've thought it all out, down to the last detail. Nothing was left to chance. But, really, but, but, but everything here is so hideous, all in angles. I always loathed angles, they're so uncomfortable. And did you think I lived in a sediment pile drawing room? So it was all fixed up beforehand? Yes, and they put it together. Deliberately. So it's not my job for you to suggest something opposite me, but, but what can be the idea behind it? Ask me another. I only know that they're waiting. 
You know, I never liked the idea of anybody's expecting something from me. It, it made me want to do, do just the opposite. Well, do it. Do it if you can. You don't even know what they expect. It's outrageous! So, so something's coming to me from you too. Something outrageous. Something nasty. You know there are some, some faces that tell me everything at once, but yours don't give me anything. Look here, why are we together? You've given us quite enough hints as it is. You may as well come out with it. Well, I know nothing, absolutely nothing about it. I'm as much in the dark as you are. We've got to know. If only we have the guts to tell. Tell what? Estelle? Yes? What have you done? I mean, why have they sent you here? That's just it. I, I have a notion not the foggiest. In fact, I'm wondering if, if, if there has not been a ghastly mistake. Don't mind. Just, just think of the number of people who become absentees every day. There must be thousands and thousands, right? And they must be sorted by what? Understappers, stupid employees who don't know their job. There's bound to be a mistake sometimes. Oh, don't stop smiling. Why don't you speak? If they made a mistake in my case, they might have done the same for you. And for you too. In any case, isn't it better to assume that we're here by mistake? Is that all you have to tell us? What else should I tell? I have nothing to hide. When I was a little kid, I lost my parents and I had a little brother to take care of. We were terribly poor and so when an old friend of my people's asked me to marry him, I said, Yes, he was very well off and my brother, he was a very delicate child who needed all sorts of attention. So really, that was the right thing for me to do, don't you agree? My husband was as old as my father. But for six years, we had a happy married life. And then, then two years ago, I met the man I was fated to love. We knew it the moment we set eyes on each other. He asked me to run away with him, but I refused. Then I got the pneumonia and it finished me. That's the whole story. No doubt, by certain standards, I did wrong, sacrifice my youth to a man nearly three times my age. Do you think that should be called a sin? Certainly not. And now tell me, is it a crime to stand by one's principles? Of course not. Surely no one can blame a man for that. Wait a bit. I ran a pacifist newspaper and then war broke out. What was I to do? Everyone was watching, wondering, will he dare? Well, I dared. I folded my hands and they shot me. Had I done anything wrong? Wrong? On the contrary, you were a, a hero. And what about your wife, Mr. Gasser? Uh, that simple. I rescued her from, from the gutter. <laughs> you see? You see? Yes, I see. Look here, what's the point of play acting and trying to throw dust in each other's eyes? We've all been tarred by the same brush. How dare you? Yes, we're criminals. Murderers. We hell, my pets. And they never make mistakes. And people aren't damned for nothing. Stop, for heaven's sake! In hell, damned souls. That's us, all three. Keep quiet! I forbid you to use such disgusting words! A damned soul. That's you, my little plaster saint. And ditto our friend there, the noble pacifist. We've had a lot of pleasure, haven't we? There have been people who burned their lives out for our sakes, and we chuckled over it. So now we have to pay the reckoning. Will you keep your mouth shut, damn it? Well, well. Oh, I understand now. I know why they put us together. I advise you to think twice before you say any more. Wait. You'll see how simple it is. Childishly simple. Obviously, there aren't any physical torments here. You agree, don't you? And yet, we're in hell. And it will be the three of us in this room forever and ever, and no one else will come here. In short, there's someone absent. The official torture. I'd noticed that. Well, it's obvious what they're after, isn't it? An economy of manpower. Or devil power, if you prefer. 
The same idea as in a cafeteria where customers serve themselves. Whatever do you mean? I mean that each of us will act as the torturer for the two others. No. I shall never be your torturer. I wish neither of you any harm and I have no concern with you. None at all. So the solution is easy enough. Each of us must stay put in his or her corner and take no notice of the other. You here, you there, and I there. Like soldiers at our posts. Also we mustn't speak, not one word. That won't be too difficult. Each of us has plenty of material for self-communings. I think I could stay 10,000 years with this my thoughts for company. Have I got to keep silence too? Yes. And th that way we'll, we'll work out our salvation. Looking into ourselves, never raising our heads. Agreed? Agreed. I agree. Then, goodbye. Oh, I'm there! But 
so tiny I can't see myself properly. But I can. Every inch of you. Now, ask me questions and I'll be as candid as any looking glass. Please, Mr. Gassa, are you sure our chatter isn't bothering you? Oh, he doesn't count. We're by ourselves. Now ask away. Are my lips all right? Sure. They're a bit smudgy. That's just what I thought. Luckily, no one's seen me yet. Wait, I'll go again, huh? Yes, there. Hmm? Follow the line of your lips. Wait, I'll guide your hand. There. That's quite good. As good as when I came in. Far better. Crueler. Your mouth looks quite diabolical like that. Good gracious, and you say you like it? Oh, how mad is it? It's not able to see for oneself. Are you sure, Miss Serrano? It's all right? Won't you call me Ness? Are my lips all right? You're lovely yourself. But how can I rely upon your taste? Is it the same as my taste? How maddening it is! I'm not driving one crazy. I have your taste, my dear, because I like you so much. Now, look at me. No straight. Now smile. I'm not so ugly either. Am I not nicer than your glass? I don't know. You scare me, <laughs> rather. Of course, my reflection in the mirror never did that. I knew it so well, like something I had tamed. And I'm, I'm going to smile, and that smile is going to sink down into your pupil, and God knows what it will become. And why shouldn't you want to tame me? Listen, I want you to call me Inez. We're to be great friends. I don't make friends with women very easily. Not with postal clerks, you mean? Hello, what's that? What? That, that nasty red spot at the bottom of your cheek. A pimple? A pimple? How simply fall there? Where? Where? There. Here. You know how they catch larks? With a lark mirror? Well, I'm your lark mirror, my dear, and you can't escape me. There isn't any pimple. Not a trace of one. So what about it? Suppose the mirror started telling lies. Or suppose I covered my eyes and refused to look at you. As he is doing. All that loveliness would be wasted on the desert air. No, don't be afraid. I can't help looking at you. And I shan't turn my eyes away. And I'll be nice to you, ever so nice. Only, you must be nice to me too. <laughs> Are you really attracted by me? Very much indeed. But I wish he'd notice me too. <laughs> of course, because he's a man. You won. Oh, but look at her, damn it. Don't pretend you haven't missed a word of what we said. Quite so, not a word. I stuck my fingers in my ears, but your voice is studded in my brain, silly chatter. Can't you two leave me in peace? I'm not interested in you. Not in me, perhaps. And what about this child? Aren't you interested in her? Oh, I saw through your game. You got on your high horse just to impress her. I asked you two to leave me in peace. There's someone talking about me in the newspaper office and I want to listen. And if it will make you feel any better, let me tell you I have no use for the child, as you call her. Child! Oh, I didn't mean it rudely. You can't! That's that. You know I begged you not to speak. It's her fault. She started. I didn't ask anything of her and she came and offered me her glass. So you say. But all the time you were making up to him. Trying every trick to catch his attention. Why shouldn't I? You're crazy, both of you. Can't you see where this is leading us? For pity's sake, keep your mouth shut. Now let's all sit back down again, quite quietly. We look at the floor, and each must try to forget that the others are there. To forget about the others? How utterly absurd! I feel you there, in every pore. Your silence clamors in my ears. You can kneel your mouth, cut your tongue out, but you can't prevent your being there. Can you stop your thoughts? I hear them, ticking away like a clock. Tick. Talk, tick, talk, 
could I be certain you hear mine? It's all very well sulking on your sofa, but you're everywhere. And every sound comes to me soiled because you've been deserted on its way. Why? You've even stolen my face. You know it and I don't. And what about her? About Estelle? <coughs> you've stolen her from me too. Do you suppose she would treat me as she does if we were alone? No, take your hands from your face. I shan't leave you in peace. That would suit your book too well. You'd go on sitting there like a sort of yogi in a trance. And even if I didn't see her, I'd feel it in my bones that she was making every sound, even the rustle of her dress, for your benefit. Throwing you smiles you didn't see. But I won't stand for that. I prefer to choose my help. I prefer to look you in the eyes and fight it out, face to face. Have it your own way. It was bound to come to this. They knew what they were about and were easy game. Of course, if they put me in a room with men, men can keep their mouth shut. <laughs> but it's no use wanting the impossible. <clears throat> so, I attract you, little girl. It seems you were making eyes at me. Don't touch me. Why not? We might anyhow be natural. I used to be mad about women, you know, and some of them were fond of me. So we may as well stop posing, we've got nothing to lose. Why bother about politeness and decorum and the rest of it? We're between ourselves, and presently we shall be naked. Naked as newborn babes. Oh, let me be! As newborn babes. Well, I'd warned you, you know. I asked so little of you, nothing but peace and a little silence. I stuck my fingers in my ears. Gomez was parting away as usual, standing in the center of the room with all the freshmen listening, in their shirt sleeves. And I tried to hear, but it wasn't too easy. Couldn't you have held your tongue? Now he's stopped talking, and all he thinks of me has gone back into his head. We've got to feel through somehow. Naked as we were born, so much the better. I want to know whom I have to deal with. You know already, there's nothing more to learn. You're wrong. So long as each of us hasn't made a clear breast of it, why they damned him or her here, we know nothing, nothing that matters. <coughs> you, you young lady, you shall begin. Tell us why. If you are frank, if you bring, if we bring our spectres out into the open, it may save us all from disaster. So out with it. Why? I don't know. They wouldn't tell me why. That's so. They wouldn't tell me either, but I have a pretty good idea. Perhaps you're shy of speaking first. Right. I lead off then. I'm not a very estimable person. No need to tell us that. We know you were a deserter. Let that be. It's only a side issue. I'm here because I treated my wife abominably. For five years. Naturally, she's still suffering. There she is. The moment I mention her, I see her. It's Gomez who interests me, but it's she I see. Where's Gomez got to? For five years. There. They've given her back my things. She's sitting by the window with my coat on her knees. The coat with the twelve bullet holes. A blood like rust. A brown ring around each hole. It was quite a museum piece, that coat. Scarred with history. And I used to wear it. Fancy. Now, can you tell it here, my love? Surely you'll squeeze one out at last? No? You can't manage it? Night after night, I came home blind drunk, thinking of wine and women. She sat up for me, of course. She never cried, never uttered a word of reproach. Only in those eyes, face, tragic eyes. I tell you, I regret nothing. I must pay the price, but I shan't whine. It's snowing in the street. Oh, won't you cry, confound you? The woman was a born martyr, a victim by vocation. Why did you hurt her like that? 
because it was so easy. Just a word was enough to make a flinch, like a sensitive plant, but never, never a reproach. I'm fond of teasing. I watched and I waited, but not a tear, not a protest. I picked it up out of the gutter, you understand. Now she's stroking it, both. Her eyes are shut, and she's feeling for the bullet holes with her fingers. What are you after? What do you expect? I tell you, I regret nothing. The truth is, she admired me too much. Does that mean anything to you? No, nobody admired me. So much the better. So much the better for you. Well, I suppose all this strikes you as very vague. Well, here's something you can get your teeth into. I brought a half-caste girl to stay in our house. My wife slept upstairs. She must have heard everything. She was an early riser. And as I and the girls have lay in bed late, late, she served us our morning coffee. You brute! Yes, a brute if you like, but a well-beloved brute. No, it's nothing. It's only Gomez. He's not talking about me. What were you saying? <laughs> yes, a brute, certainly. Why else should I be here? Your turn. Well, I was what some people down there called a damned bitch. Damned already. So it's no surprise my being here. Is that all you have to say? No, that there was that affair with Florence. A dead man's tail with three corpses to it. He to start with, then she and I. So there's no one left down there. I have nothing to worry about. It was a clean sweep. It's only that room. I see it now and then. Empty, with the doors locked. <coughs> no. They just unlocked them. It's still left. There's a notice on the door. That's too ridiculous. Three. Three deaths, you said. Three. One man and two women. Yes. Well, well. Did he kill himself? He? No. He had the guts for that. Still, he had every reason to. We led him a dog's life. As a matter of fact, he was run over by a tram. Silly sort of end, really. I was living with them. He was my cousin. Was Florence beautiful? Beautiful? You know, I don't regret anything, but I'm not very keen on telling you the story. That's all right. So you got sick of him? It was little things that got on my nerves. For instance, he made a sound when he was drinking, a sort of gurgle, trifles like that. He was pathetic, vulnerable. Why are you smiling? Because I, anyhow, am not vulnerable. Don't be too sure. I kept under her skin and she saw the world through my eyes. When she left him, I had her on my hands. We shared a bed sitting room at the other end of town. And then? And then that tram did its job. I used to remind her of it every day. Yes, my pet, we killed him between us. I'm rather cruel, really. Well, so am I. No, you're not cruel, it's something else. What? I'll tell you later. When I say I'm cruel, I mean that I can't get on without making people suffer. Like a live coal. A live coal in others' hearts. When I'm alone, I flicker out. For six months, I flamed away in her heart till there was nothing but a cinder. Then one night, she got up when I was asleep and turned on the gas. And then she crept back into bed. So now you know. Well, well. Yes, what's on your mind? Nothing, only that it's not a pretty story. Obviously, but what matter? As you say, 
What matter? Your turn. What have you done? I, I don't know. I have no idea why. I rack my brains, but it's no use. Right. Then we'll give you a hand. That fellow with a smashed face. Who was he? Who, who do you mean? You know very well. The man you were so scared of seeing when you came in. Oh, him. He, he was a friend. Why were you afraid of him? That's my business, Mr. Vasna. Did he shoot himself on your account? Oh, how absurd. Of course not. Then why were you so scared? He blew his brains out, didn't he? That's how his face got smashed. Oh, no, no, don't go on, please. Because of you. Because of you. He shot himself because of you. No, no. It's not fair. You two bullying me like that. It's, it's not fair. I want to go. I want to go. <laughs> go if you can. Personally, I ask for nothing better. Unfortunately, that door's locked. Oh, you're hateful, both of you. Hateful, yes. That's the word. Very well then, get on with it. That fellow who killed himself on your couch. You were his mistress, eh? Of course she was. And he wanted to have her alone to himself. Isn't that so? He danced the tango like a professional, but was as poor as a church mouse. That's right, isn't it? Was he poor or not? Give a straight answer. Yes, he was poor. And then you had your reputation to keep up. One day he came and implored you to run away with him and you laughed in his face. That's it. You laughed in his face and so he killed himself. Did you used to look at Florence in that way? Yes. Well, you're wrong. What of you? He wanted me to have a baby. So there. And you didn't want one? I certainly didn't. But worse luck, the baby came. I went away to Switzerland for five months. No one knew anything. It was a girl. Roger was with me when he was born. It pleased him to no end having a little daughter. It didn't please me. And then? And then there was a balcony overlooking the lake. I brought a, a, a big stone. Roger, he, he could see what I was up to and he kept on screaming, Estelle, for God's sake, don't, don't do it. I hated him then. He saw everything. He, he was leaning over the balcony and, and he saw the rings spreading over the water. Yes, and then? And then I, I came back to Paris and he did as he wished. You mean he blew his brains out? It was absurd of him, really. My husband never suspected anything. Oh, I love you! Nothing doing. Tears don't flow in this place. I was a coward! A coward! Poor child. So the hearing's over, but there's no need to look like a hanging judge. A hanging judge? I'd give a lot to be able to see myself in a glass. Ah, how hot it is. So sorry. Don't bother. You can stay in your shirt sleeves. Things are... Just so. You mustn't be angry with me, Estelle. I'm not angry with you. But what about me? Are you angry with me? Yes. Well, Mr. Garcia, you have us in the nude, all right. Do you understand things any better for it? I wonder. Yes, perhaps a trifle better. Now, suppose we start trying to help each other? I don't need help. Yes, they've laid their stare down cunningly like a cobweb. If you make any movement, if you lift your hand to fan yourself, Estelle and I feel a little dumb. Alone, none of us can save himself or herself. We're linked together inextricably, so you can take your choice. Hello, what's happening? They've let it. And there's a man sitting on my bed. My bed, if you please. They've let it, they've let it. Ah, step in. Step in, you brute. Make yourself at home. Ah, there's a woman too. She's going up to him, putting her hands on his shoulders. And, damn it. Why don't we turn the lights on? It's, it's getting dark. Now he's bending down to kiss her. But that's my room. 
my room! I can't see anything. It's completely dark. But I hear them. Whispering. Whispering. Is he going to make love to her on my bed? What's that she said? That it's noon and the sun is shining? I must be going blind. Blacked out. I, I can't see or hear a thing. So the earth's done with me, it seems. No more alibis for me. I feel so empty. Desiccated. Really dead at last. All of me is here in this room. What's that you were saying? Something about helping me, wasn't it? Yes. Helping me to do what? To defeat their devilish tricks. And what do you expect me to do in return? To help me. Inez, it only takes a little effort, just a spark of human feeling. Human feeling? That's beyond my range. I'm rotten to the core. And how about me? All the same, suppose we try? It's no use. I'm all dried up. I can't give and I can't receive. How could I help you? A dead twig ready for the burning. Florence was beautiful. Do you realize that this young woman is fated to be your torturer? Perhaps I've guessed it. It's through her they'll get to you. You see, I, I, I'm, I'm different, of course. I'm aloof. I, I take no notice of her. Suppose you had a try? Yes. It's a trap, Inez. They're watching and waiting to see if you'll fall into it. I know, and you're another trap. Do you think they haven't foreknown every word you say? And there's a whole nest of pitfalls we can't see. Everything here is a booby trap. But what do I care? <laughs> I'm a pitfall too, for her, obviously. And perhaps I shall catch her. You'll catch nothing. We're chasing after each other, round and round, in a vicious circle, like horses on a roundabout. That's part of their plan, of course. Drop it, Inez. Open your hands and let go of everything, or else you'll bring disaster on all three of us. Do I look like the sort of person who lets go? No. I know what's coming. I'm to burn and it's to last forever. But do you think I let go? I'll catch her, and she'll see you through my eyes as Florence saw that other man. What's the good of trying to enlist my sympathy? Yes, I know everything, and I can't feel sorry, even for myself. A trap, and don't I know it? And that I'm in a trap myself up to the neck, and there's nothing to be done about it. And if it suits their book, so much the better. Well, I anyhow can feel sorry for you too. Look at me, yes. look at me, we're naked, naked right through, and I can see into your heart. That's one link between us. Do you really think I'd want to hurt you? I don't regret anything, I'm dried up too. But for you, I can still feel pity. Don't! I hate being bored about. And keep your pity for yourself, Garsa. Don't forget that there are traps for you too. In this room, all nicely set for you. You do better to watch your own interests. But, if you will leave us in peace, this child and me, I'll see I don't do you any harm. Very well. Please, Ngarsa. What do you want of me? You can help me anyhow. If you want help, apply to her. I implore you, Ngarsa, you give me a word. Help me quick, I don't want to be left alone. All this taken into the cabaret. Taken home. Peter. Now the dancing together. Who's Peter? Such a silly little boy. He used to call me his, his glance and scream. Just fancy. He used to be terribly in love with me. She's persuaded him to go out with her tonight. Do you love him? They're sitting down now. She's puffing like Krampus. What a fool that girl is to this some dancing, huh? But I guess she does it to reduce. What? No, of course I don't love him. He's only 18. I'm not a baby snatcher. Then why 
bother about them? What difference can it make? He belongs to me. Nothing on earth belongs to you anymore. I said he was mine. He was all mine. Yes, he was yours once. But now, try to touch him. Try to make him hear. Olga can touch him. Talk to him as much as she likes. That's so, isn't it? She can squeeze his hands and rub herself against him. Yes. Like, look, he's, he's huffing and puffing and blowing his face. When my two poor little lambs can see how ridiculous she is, I can laugh at her. Oh, once, once I only had a glance in their direction and she would have drunk away. Is there nothing left of me? Nothing of you whatsoever. Not even a shadow. All that you own is in this room. Would you like that statue on the mantelpiece? How about that paper knife? The black and white sofa is yours. And I, my dear, am yours forever. You mind? Well, that's good. I, I, I wish if you would dare to call me his glancing stream, his crystal god. You know me too well. You know I'm rotten through and through. Peter! Think of me. Peter, dear. It's me, dear God, and I say me. All the time, you are thinking my, my glancing stream, my crystal girl. I'm, I'm only half here and only half with you and half clean down there with you. Clean and, and clear and, and bright like running water. Look at her face, all scarlet like a tomato. No, it's absurd. We laughed at her together often and often, you and I. Growing 
all over. The dirt has left me. Don't try to make me, Garfran. Take me in your arms. Now then, Garfran. It's too you should say that. Don't turn away from me. You're a man, aren't you? And I, I, I'm surely not such a prank as all that. Huh? A, a man killed himself on my account. Ross, look here, there's, there's nothing, there's nothing to look here other than that these sofas and the table and the stupid ornaments. And surely I'm, I'm better to look at the stupid furniture, huh? Huh? I've fallen out of, of their hearts like, like a sparrow fallen from its nest. So gather me up, dear, and and pull me to your heart, and you'll see how nice I can be. I tell you, it's to her you should say that. To her, but but she doesn't count. She's a woman. <laughs> oh, I don't count. Is that what you think? Oh, but my poor little fallen nestling, you've been sheltering in my heart for ages, though you didn't realize it. No, don't be afraid. I'll keep looking at you forever and ever, without the flutter of my eyelids. You live like moat in my dreams, in a sunbeam. A sunbeam indeed. Don't talk such rubbish. You've tried it before, and you should know that it doesn't work. Estelle, my glancing stream, my crystal, your crystal. Ha <laughs> ha! How grotesque! Your crystal? Everybody knows by now what I did to my baby. It's no use playing the fool. The crystal's shattered into bits, but I don't care. Look at me. I'm a hollow dummy. All that's left of me is the outside, but even that is not for you. Come to me, Estelle. And you should be whatever you like. A muddy stream, a glancing stream. And deep down in my eyes, you'll see yourself just as you want to be. Let me be! You haven't any eyes! That's how you should be for this. So it's a man you need? Not any man. You. No humbug now. Any man would do your business. As I happen to be here, you want me, right? Listen. I'm not your sort at all. I'm not a young nincompoop and I don't dance the tango. Well, I'll take you as you are, and perhaps I shall change you. I doubt it. I shan't pay much attention to you. I have other things to think about. What things? They wouldn't interest you. Well, in that case, I'll just sit there on your sofa and wait for you to take notice of me. I promise not to bother you at all. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Fawn on him like a silly bitch you are. Grovel and cringe. And he hasn't even good looks to commend Don't him. listen to her. She has no eyes, no ears, she's nothing. I'll give you what I can. It doesn't amount to much, but I shan't love you. I know you too well. Do you want me? Anyhow? Yes. And then I ask no more. In that case? <laughs> Esther, Gassan, you must be going crazy. Don't forget, you're not alone. I'm here too. Of course, but what does it matter? Under my eyes, you couldn't. Couldn't do it. Why not? I'm often undressed with my maid looking on. <laughs> Let go. Let go. Don't paw at her with your dirty man's hands. Take care. I'm no gentleman. I have no compunction about striking a woman. But you promised me. You promised. I'm only asking you keep your word. Why should I? Considering you were the first to break our agreement. Very well then. Have it your own way. I'm the weaker party one against two. Don't forget that I'm here and watching. <laughs> yes. Carry on. Make love and get it over with. Where in hell? My turn will come. Now then, your lips. Give me your lips. Really? Did I not tell you not to pay any attention to her? You're wrong. It's no mess. He's back in the press room. They shut the window. It must be winter down there. Six months inside. 
I warned you I'd be absent-minded sometimes, didn't I? The shivering. They kept their coats on. <laughs> Funny how they used to feel the cold like that when I'm feeling so hot. Ah, this time he's talking about me. You might as well tell me what they're saying. Is it going to be long? Nothing. Nothing was repeating. He's a swine, that's all. A goddamn bloody swine. Let's come back to ourselves. Are you going to love me? I want to know. Will you trust me? <laughs> what a quaint thing to ask. Considering you're going to be under my eyes all the time, and I don't think I have much to fear from Inez as far as you're concerned. Obviously. I was thinking of a different kind of trust. Talk away! Talk away, you swine! I'm not there to defend myself! Estelle, you must give me your trust! Oh, what a nuisance you are! I'm giving you my mouth, my arms, my whole body, everything could be so simple! My trust! I haven't any left to give and you're making me terribly embarrassed. You must have something ghastly on your conscience to make such a huge fuss about me trusting. They shot me! I know because you refused to fight! Well, why shouldn't you? I, I didn't refuse. He talks well, doesn't he? Makes a good case out against me. But he never said what I should have done instead. Should I have gone up to the general and said, General, I decline to fight? A mug's game. They would have promptly locked me up. But I wanted to show my colors. My true colors, you understand. I wasn't going to be silenced. <coughs> so I, I took the train. They caught me at the frontier. Where were you trying to go? To Mexico. I meant to launch a pacifist newspaper down there. Well, well, why won't you speak? What can I say? You acted quite rightly as you didn't want to fight. But, darling, don't be silly. How can I guess what you want me to say? Can't you guess? He wants you to tell him that he bolted like a lion. For bolt he did, and that's what's biting him. Bolted, went away, we won't quarrel over words. You had to run away, didn't you? If you didn't, they would have put you in jail. Of course. Well, Estelle, am I a coward? What? I can't decide that for you, darling. I can't put myself in your skin. You must decide that for yourself. I can't decide. Anyway, you, you must remember. Huh? You must have had reasons back in the way you did. I had. Well? But were they real reasons? You have a twisted mind, plaguing yourself over such trifles. I thought it all out. I wanted to make a stand, but was that my real motive? Exactly, that's the question. Was that your real motive? No doubt you argued it out with yourself. You weighed the pros and cons and found good reasons for what you did, but fear and hatred and all the dirty little instincts one keeps hidden. Their motives too. So carry on, Gasa, and try to be honest with yourself for once. Do I need you to tell me that? Day and night I, I paced myself from the door to the window, from the window to the door. I cried <laughs> into my heart. I sleuthed myself like a detective. By the end of it all, it felt as if I'd given my whole life into introspection. But always, I hark back to the one thing that was certain. That I'd acted as I did. That I'd taken the train to the frontier. But why? Why? Finally, I thought to myself, my death would settle it. If I face death courageously, it'll prove I'm no coward. And how did you face death? Miserably. <laughs> Rottenly. Oh, it was only a physical lapse. It could happen to anyone. I'm not ashamed of it. Only everything's been left in suspense forever. Sir, look at me. I want to feel someone looking at me when they're talking about me on earth. I like green eyes. Green eyes? Just talk to him. And Estelle, do you like cowards? Well, if you knew how little I cared, coward or hero, provided he kisses well. There they are. 
slumped in their chairs, sucking on their cigars. Though they look half asleep, they think, Kasha is a coward. <laughs> but only vaguely, dreamy, one has to think of something. The chap Kasha is a coward. That's what they say. Those friends of mine, in six months' time, they'll be saying, cowardly as that skunk Kasha. You're lucky, you two. There's no one left on earth to give you another thought. But I, I'm long in time. What about your wife, Garcel? Oh, didn't I tell you? She's dead. Dead? Yes. She died just now, about two months ago. Of grief? What else should she die of? So all is for the best. My wife's dead. The war's over, and I've carved out my place in history. My poor darling. Look here, look here, look here. Yes, look. Touch me, touch me, yes. Keep it, don't look away. What matter what they are thinking? They'll die of one by one, forget about them. There's only me now. But they won't forget about me. They'll die, but others will come in their place to carry on the legend. I've left my fate in their hands. You think too much, that's your trouble. What else is there to do now? I was a man of action once. Oh, what I'd give to be there with them again, just for one day. I fling their lie in their teeth. But I'm locked out. They're passing judgment on my life without troubling about me. And they're right because I'm dead, dead and done with. <laughs> Only a bad number. You got smashed. Still there. Listen, Miss Ted, I want you to do me a service. No, no, don't shrink away. I know this must seem strange for you, having someone else ask you for your, for your help. But if you'll just make the effort, if you'll only will it hard enough, I dare say we can love each other. Think of it this way. A thousand of them are proclaiming other powers. But what do numbers matter? If someone, if just one person can quite positively say that I didn't run away, that I'm not the sort who runs away, that I'm brave and decent and all the rest of it, then that one person's faith will save me. Will you have that faith in me? Then I shall love you and cherish you forever. Self, will you? Oh, don't be silly, darling. <laughs> Did you expect I could love a coward? But just now you said... I was only teasing. I love men, my dear, who are real men with tough skin and strong hands. You, let me help you. You don't have a coward's hands or a coward's skin or a coward's hair. And it's, it's for your hair, your skin, your hands that, that I love you. Do you mean this? Do you really mean it? Shall I swear it? Then I snap my fingers at the ball. Those below and those in here. Sam, we shall climb out of hell. <laughs> What's that? But she doesn't mean a word of what she says. How can you be such a simpleton? Estelle, am I a coward? As if she cared a damn either way. Yes. How dare you? Don't, don't, don't listen to her. If you want me to have this faith in you, you must begin by trusting me. Yes. Trust away. Trust away. She wants a man. That's why you can trust her. She wants a man's arm around her waist. A man's smell. A man's eyes glowing with desire. She convinced you you were God Almighty if she thought it would give you pleasure. Stan, is this true? Answer me, is it true? What would you expect me to say? Can't you imagine how, how, how exasperating it is to keep on answering questions one cannot make head or tail out of? You do make things difficult. Well, I would love you the same even if you were a coward. There, isn't that enough? You disgust me, both of you. What are you up to? I'm leaving. You all get past, close off. I'll make them open it. Please! Please! Don't you 
Sorry, my pet. The bell doesn't work. I tell you, they shall open it. I can't endure it any longer. I'm through with the both of you. Please, oh, I beg you, don't leave me. Don't, don't leave me. Go I'm away. Sorry. You're even fouler than she. I won't let myself be forced down in your eyes. You're soft and slimy like an octopus, like a quagmire. I promise not to bother you. Please, don't leave me alone with it. Go I'm away. Here. Look after yourself. I can ask you to come here. How? How mean you are! Yes, it's quite true. You're, you're a coward! Well, my little sparrow wants to let You spat in my face. No doubt staying up to him. And we've had a little kiss for his cow, but no matter. He's leaving, and good riddance. We two women will have a big place to ourselves. That door open. You won't say anything. I'm going to swear. Anywhere! As far as you as I can! Open the door! Open it, you! I'll enjoy anything! Your rags and your red heart! Flowers and your golden legs! Your rags, your, your songs and scallops and all your other feet and scallops! Everything that cause and pains and tears! I'll put up with any dogs that you hold! Anything would be better than this! This hanging your mind! Sleeping pains that gnaws and pummels and dances one, but never hurt quite enough. Will you make it open? I shall not go. And what about you, Estelle? So what of it? Which of the three of us will leave? The barrier's down. Why are we waiting? <laughs> oh, but what a situation. <laughs> it's a scream. We're inseparables. <laughs> inseparables! Gossip. Let me hand it. We'll push her out and then slam the door. Let go, let go. No, no, Estelle, I beg of you. Not into the passage. Let go of her. You're crazy. She hates you. No, please. It's because of her I'm staying here. Because of me. Very well, shut the door. It's ten times hotter now than it opened. Me, you said. Yes. You, anyhow, know what it means to be a coward. Yes, I know. And you know what wickedness is, and shame, and fear. There were days when you peered into yourself, looked into the dark, secret places of your heart, and what you saw there made you faint with horror. And then the next day you didn't know what to make of it. You couldn't interpret the horror you'd glimpsed the night before. Yes, you know what it costs to be, to be evil. And when you say I'm a coward, you know from experience what that means. Isn't that so? Yes. So it's you I have to convince. You are of my kind. You really think I meant to go? No, I couldn't leave you in here gloating over my defeat with all those thoughts in your head about me. Do you really wish to convince me? That's all I wish for now. I can't hear them any longer, you know. Probably that means they're done with me. For good and all. There's nothing of me left on earth. Not even the name of coward. So Inez, we're alone. Only the two of you remain to give another thought to me. She. It doesn't matter. It's you who matters. You who hates me. If you have faith in me, then I'm saved. It won't be easy. Have a look at me. I'm a hard-headed woman. I'll give you all the time that's needed. Yes. We've lots of time. All the time. Listen. 
Each man has a name in life, a leading motive, isn't that so? Well, I didn't give a damn for wealth or for money. I aimed at being a real man, a tough as they say. I stake everything on the same horse. Can one possibly be a coward when one's caught in danger at every turn? And can you judge a life by a single action? Why not? Thirty years you dreamt you were a hero and condoned a thousand petty lapses because a hero, of course, can do no wrong. An easy method, obviously. But then came the day when you were up against it. The red light of real danger. And you took the train to Mexico. I dreamt, you say? It was no dream. When I chose the hardest path, I chose my path deliberately. A man is what he wills himself to be. Prove it. Prove it was no dream. It's what one does and nothing else that shows the stuff that one's made of. I died too soon. I wasn't allowed to do my deeds. One always dies too soon or too late, and yet one's life is complete at that moment, with a line drawn neatly under it, ready for the summing up. You are your whole life and nothing else. What a poisonous woman you are, with an answer for everything. Now then, it shouldn't be so hard to convince me. Come on, man, pull yourself together, rake up some good arguments. Ah, oh, wasn't I right when I said you were vulnerable? Now you're going to pay the price. And what a price it is, Garcelle. You're a coward. Because I wish it. Do you hear? I wish it. And yet, see how weak I am. A mere breath on the air. A gaze observing you. A formless thought that thinks you. Ah, they're open now. Those big hands. Those coarse man hands, but what do you hope to do? You can't rock thoughts with hands. So you've got no choice. You must convince me, and you're at my mercy. Garcia? What? Revenge yourself? How? Kiss me, darling, then you'll hear her squeal. <laughs> That's right, Inez. You're at my mercy, just as I am yours. Oh, you coward! <laughs> you weakling! Why did you want to console you? Oh, <laughs> sweet! Squeal away, then! <laughs> right, what a lovely pair you make! Oh, if you could only see his big paws playing on your back, rocking up your skin and creasing the silk. Be careful, though, his hands perspiring. It's going to leave a big stain on your back. Squeal away! Squeal away, man! Have me like a darling daddy, still never finish her! Yes, <laughs> that's right, Garcia. Press until you, press until you can you see your bodies melting into each other like a pile of warm, throbbing flesh. Love's a grand solace, isn't it, my friend? Deep and dark as sleep. But I'll see you don't sleep. Don't, don't listen to her! Still lips to my mouth and yours, yours, yours. Well, do as you're told. <laughs> what a lovely scene! Howard Garcia holding baby killer Estelle in his manly arms. Make your seats, everyone. Will Howard Garcia kiss the lady, or won't he dare? What's the betting? I'm watching. Everybody's watching, and I'm a crowd all by myself. Do you hear them, Garcia? Do you hear the crowd? Mumbling. Muttering. Coward. 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 That's what they're saying. I shall never let you go. You can't escape me. What do you hope to gain from her silliness? Forgetfulness? Well, I shan't forget you, not I. It's I who you must convince. So, Come along now. I'm waiting. Look how obedient he is. Like a well-trained dog who comes when his mistress calls. You shan't hold him. 
and you never will. Will night never come? Never. You will always see me. Always. This bronze. Yes. How's the moment? I'm looking at this thing on the mantelpiece and I understand I'm in hell. I tell you, everything was thought out beforehand. They knew I'd be standing here at this mantelpiece, stroking this thing of bronze with all those eyes intent on me. Devouring me. What? Only the two of you. <laughs> I thought there were more, many more. <laughs> so this is hell. I'd have never imagined it. You remember all that we were told? about the torture chambers, and the fire, and the brimstone, and the burning heart. Old wives' tales. There's no need for red-hot pokers. Hell is other people. My darling. No. Let me be. She is between us. I cannot love you while she's watching. Right? Then I'll have to stop her watching. Thank you. 